We should never allow the government to decide what is acceptable speech and what is unacceptable speech. Um, we, should, we should penalize behaviors, not opinions, and not speech. Uh, if you start trying to regulate speech, you start trying to regulate um, thoughts, you start trying to regulate beliefs other than behaviors, uh, there's no way that you're not going to abridge the constitutional rights of millions of Americans.
This is the fiendish mind that only yesterday gave terrible and personal new meaning to words like gas oven, genocide, purge. This is the devil whose underlings, with sadistic delight, butchered the body of Willie Schmidt, a harmless music critic, by mistake, and sent his battered corpse home in a sealed coffin to a grieving widow and her young children. This is the cunning mastermind that promised German youth. Today, Germany. Tomorrow, the world. And incidentally, he meant your world. Here he is, speaking at a mammoth rally in the Munich arena, filled with 75,000 of his worker servicemen, as he called them. An additional 200,000 persons hear his voice on the outside, blasting over loudspeakers. The faithful catch his fire. They scream for blood. The Fuhrer's tempo quickens. He becomes wild with excitement. And animal tempers are ignited. Man kann nicht dem untreu werden, was einem ganzen Leben Inhalt, Sinn und Zweck gegeben hat. Es will nicht so etwas aus nichts, wenn diesem Werde nicht ein großer Befehl zugrunde liegt. Und dem Befehl gab uns kein irdischer Vorgesetzter, dem gab uns der Gott, der unser Volk geschaffen hat. So sei dann unser Erlebnis an diesem Abend, in jeder Stunde, an jedem Tag, nur zu denken an Deutschland, an Volk und an Reich, an unsere deutsche Nation. Und der deutsche Volk siegt ein! Sieg ein! Sieg ein! the final solution, unquote. This was the term the Nazis came to use for the annihilation of six million Jews. And meanwhile, millions of others died in the bloodbath of persecution and aggressive war that followed. 400,000 Americans, six million Russians, more than 357,000 Englishmen, 450,000 Frenchmen, six million Poles, 10,000 Norwegians, 150,000 Greeks, 5,000 Danes. 2,000 Catholic priests perished at the hands of the German Nazi terror. And through it all, through all this ghastly bloodletting, German workers and industrialists alike prospered and grew fat as they made machines for killing people more efficiently. It's Raphael Warnock's talking puppies because he doesn't want you to hear this. Not God bless America. God America. Warnock defended Jeremiah Wright's hatred, then gave him an award for telling. We celebrate Reverend Wright. Warnock celebrate anti-American hatred. God America. Jeremiah Wright doing what he should do. He is a and a Sir. prophet. A radical's. Do you think? Donald Trump's win was legitimate.
the so election legit? The, the election is by this uh, intrusion? Uh, I don't see this intrusion. President elect as a legitimate president. You do not consider him a legitimate mm -hmm. president. Does he Chuck think God. that Democrats should put this away, this whole idea of legitimate, illegitimate? The president's not going to get in the middle of this right now. I, I, I get it, but I'll, you didn't answer the question. Yeah. Is Donald Trump legitimate? I think there's a cloud of questions around a what happened. There, there could be corruption. clouds of questions, and we disagree on things, but, yeah. but on, honestly, I mean, yes or no, is he the legitimately elected president of the United States when he raises his hand? We're counting on our law enforcement community to get to the bottom of these questions. He also won't. Do you agree with John Lewis? Do you agree that Donald Trump is, in effect, not a legitimate president? I think that there's no question that the process that elected him was not legitimate. Do you agree with John Lewis on what yeah. point? Of elect, although legally elected, is not legitimate for all the reasons. Okay. I, I believe, Congressman, that, 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 that uh, Donald Trump will legitimate pre legitimacy question. Okay. The legitimacy questions come up. You say he will be president of the United States, but you're you're uh, at least reluctant to say he will be the legitimate president of the United States. Is that right? He's he going to be president. But isn't it more difficult now to work together when you've said flatly he's not even a legitimate president? Well, we I don't recognize that. his no. legitimacy. John, John Lewis said that. John Lewis said that. No, it was, uh, well, you believe he's a legitimate president? Well, he was elected. And the fact that Donald Trump can't think now he's not a legitimate president. And that he's won fewer votes can, than Hillary Clinton. And can't bear to tell him the truth. And now the delegitimization of the presidency is taking hold within the country. Do you think it was a legitimate election? I think that there are lots of questions about its legitimacy. The 2016 election wasn't legitimate. What does it mean to say it's not legitimate? It was not a legitimate election. What, you think it was a, legi a legitimate election? The time here, Donna, my question to you is, was it a legitimate election? Does it count? Uh, I, uh, my personal view is that it was not a legitimate election. So it doesn't count? <laughs> wow, this sounds just like the 2020 coverage, doesn't it? Until it doesn't. I mean, that's what happened after an election. That's what everybody forgets. So all these people on TV on their soapboxes with the title of anchor or pundit who are screaming at you that, 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 that the president should absolutely concede that he has no legal recourse, that this, that Joe Biden is absolutely le le legitimate. Well, what did you just hear? This is, this is something they planted right after the 2016 election, and it hounded this president for four years in terms of Russian collusion. You know, I went back, just, just for uh, essence and giggles, as far as looking at President Trump as president-elect, his first press conference after he was elected. Thirteen times reporters brought up in 13 different questions, either Russia or Vladimir Putin. Almost nothing that the president ran on in terms of immigration, in terms of deregulation. All those things that got him elected wasn't even brought up in his press conference. It was solely Russia, and that was a preview of what we got for four years. And now these people are telling you, they're telling the president that he's destroying democracy? I believe that that, that process started about four years ago. Albert Groby. Prepare yourself for the shock of your life. You are about to come face to face with the most monstrous crime of all time. For this is the story of a demagogue, a demoniacal genius with criminal sadistic proclivities and his ruthless cohort participants. 
a story about a gang of killers who embarked on a mass annihilation of millions of human beings. This is a story compounded of human degradation beyond comprehension. A highly organized scheme which used every device known to modern science, but deliberately twisted for the infliction of agonizing torture, of awesome power built on mountains of human corpses. This is the revolting story of the Nazi party and National Socialism a movement nurtured by a savage determination to ravage and destroy, a movement that bathed itself in an ocean of human blood. From the very beginning, it was a tale of horror. From the very beginning, the sanctity of human life was violated. It all started after the First World War, when Adolf Hitler took over the National Socialist German Workers' Party and outlined a program aimed at building a super state. Heavens, and, and uh, one of those is the discovery of dark matter. Now, I'm going to read some scriptures to you that I'll be honest with you. There's a phrase here that I never quite understood. Psalms 18, 9 through 11. He bowed the heavens also and came down, and darkness was under his feet. He rode upon a cherub and did fly and was seen upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his secret place, his pavilion round about him, where were dark waters and thick clouds in the sky. Psalms 92, 1 and 2. The Lord reigneth. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of the isles be glad thereof. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and judgment are... Uh, the habitation of his throne. And here's some other scriptures, Job 34, 4 and 9. Where was thou when I laid the foundation of the earth and stretched out the cornerstone thereof? God says, when I made the cloud, the garment thereof, and the thick darkness a swaddling band for it. Exodus chapter 20, verse 21. Moses drew near the thick darkness where God was. 1 Kings 18, 12 and 13 says, the Lord said he would dwell in thick darkness. Now, when I read these scriptures, the thing that kept coming to me was this. God is light. When you go to heaven, there's no darkness. It's surrounded by light. Uh, when angels appear, they're very bright. Why do these scriptures talk about when God shows up with, with Moses, when God shows up here or there, he, he's surrounded by darkness. I never understood this darkness. October 4th, 1993, an older article, but it's up to date now with what we're talking about. Time Magazine describes, I quote, a halo of dark matter around our galaxy. A halo of dark matter around our galaxy. Uh, Kim Greist of the University of California has been scanning the skies for more than a year in search of the mysterious and elusive material called dark matter. The scientists couldn't see it and couldn't say what it was, but they knew it was out there because of its undeniable effect on stars and planets. What could this invisible stuff be made of? This is a special article that was written. The dark matter is believed to be the key to the universe. We are told it is a quest to know the fate of the universe. The unseen material makes up at least 90% of the mass in the cosmos. It generates most of the gravity and thus controls the universal evolution. It is holding the universe together. Scientists have discovered a dark ring of dark matter on the edge of the galaxy. Where does God dwell? Not in the galaxy, but God dwells on the outside. He dwells in dark. Isn't that amazing? He dwells in darkness, not just talking about dark space. We're talking about dark matter. Whatever it is, it's holding the universe together. Colossians 1.17 said, In him all things consist. And the Greek word consist means holds together. He is upholding all things, the Bible said, by the word of his power. So there has been again... Uh, the discovery of something here in relationship to what Scripture teaches recently that's helping us better to understand the things concerning the things of God. Well, I tell you what, you that are watching at home right now ought to just start praising the Lord and thanking the Lord for what He's revealing to people uh, in this day and time in relationship to this. Now, let me share with you a few more articles here that I'd like to read. 
Here's one that talks about scientists detect rivers in the sky by Randolph Schmidt. Uh, massive rivers of vapor, some carrying as much water as the Amazon River, have been detected in the lower atmosphere. In this article, it says they were discovered by Reginald Newell of of uh, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, half a dozen vapor rivers carrying water from the equator to the poles. The narrow flow looks like a river in the sky. Some are 4,800 miles long and 420 to 480 miles wide. And you know, many scientists believe that the Earth one time had a covering or a canopy of water around it. That's interesting. Then, in the magazine Air and Space, June and July 1993, now, I'm just going to read to you what the article said. It says, a, a secret NASA satellite has recorded the voice of uh, angels seen in space. Even eerier, the heavenly chorus is coming from the center of a massive black hole in the M51 galaxy, 20 million light years away. Classified memos smuggled from NASA headquarters in Washington, D.C. failed to address the implications of the recording. But sources privately concede that it, is not, it not only proves that angels exist, it confirms heaven is a real place. Class, um, the recording is precisely seven minutes long, and the sound is so clear that it cannot be denied, said a highly placed insider. You can hear thousands and maybe even millions of voices singing glory, glory, glory to the Lord on high over and over again. NASA spokesman said that the discovery of the black hole in the M5 galaxy was a stunning achievement and should not be minimized by rumors of the even greater discovery of angels in space. End of quote. In Ray Brubaker's book, Star Wars and Angels in Space, according to Weekly World News, three Soviet cosmonauts, and before I, before I quote this to you, let me say that there was a gentleman I met about um, seven or eight years ago in Alabama who taught Russians how to speak English when they came from Russia, when they immigrated to the States. He said this was a true story. He said he was in Russia visiting and they were talking about this because it had just happened several years ago. Three Soviet cosmonauts, Vladimir Solo Solovev, Oleg Atkov, and boy, these names. <laughs> Leonid Kiz Kizin said they witnessed the most awe-inspiring spectacle ever encountered in space, a, a band of glowing angels. This is reported to have happened during their 155th day aboard the orbiting uh, Salyut 7 Space Center. Somebody told me if you've been on space 155 days, you'd see all kinds of things. Well, I don't know, but look at this. What we saw, they said, were seven giant-like figures in the form of humans, but with wings and mist like halos, as in the classic depiction of angels. And of course, what's interesting is in the book of Revelation, it said, and there were seven angels which had the seven trumpets preparing themselves to sound. Whether or not there's a correlation there, no one knows except the Lord. Now, in summing up what we want to share with you in, 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 as we begin to conclude uh, this particular teaching, and I don't want you to miss the point. The point is, is that throughout history, from the very beginning of time, when God taught Adam and taught Seth, and Seth, of course, taught his sons and Enoch, the secrets of heaven and of the universe.
From Amram and Carey Films comes this true and tragic story of a small three and a half year old boy who lived in Aleppo, Syria. His name is Amram Daknish. He was seen one night in an ambulance with blood on his head. His family survived the worst night of their lives when Russian airstrikes destroyed his neighborhood. The world saw him, cried for him, remembers him today. The famous director, George Lucas, brings this story to life in a way you will never forget because it really happened. Rated PG-13. He came from Earth. He was only four years old. He was the son of a diplomat. He was a time traveler and the first ever to visit another world. His name is Jason McRich. He's going where no boy has ever gone before to a place called Opposite Earth is what? Now on DVD and Blu-ray. This is your president. In the past 10 years, I have fooled all of you into believing the socialist ideology of everyone is equal. How? By making everyone believe the lie and having destroyed our nation's sovereignty. Through communism, we all will be a unified...